It was during the spring of 1922 that German farmer Andreas Gruber and his family were brutally bludgeoned and hacked to death with a rusty farm tool. But despite nearly a century of investigations, employing everything from clairvoyance to modern forensic techniques, the killer is still not known. Days prior to the proceedings of March 31st, 1922, Andreas, who lived at the remote farmstead known today as Interkaifek, began noticing some strange things. He related this to friends, but not police. Gruber had found footprints leading out of the forest behind his house, yet none leading back. In addition, he believed that he was hearing things in the attic, people walking. And he had also found a newspaper that seemed to be from nowhere. His house keys even went missing. Despite all of this, Gruber reported nothing to the police. Unsurprisingly, it was just days later that he and his entire family were brutally butchered. Gruber lived with his wife, their daughter who had lost her husband in World War I, and her two children, one of which whom was believed to be fathered by Gruber himself. The family also employed a maid who had been unfortunately in the house at the time of the violence. While no one knows exactly how things played out, the results are well documented, and there are lots of photos. Gruber's wife was found bludgeoned in the head, breaking her skull completely open, in addition to signs of strangulation, so somebody obviously really wanted her dead. The two-year-old boy that was said to be the product of Gruber's incestuous relationship with his daughter had his face caved in. Gruber's daughter herself also had the side of her face collapsed, in addition to a number of other wounds, including a skull-shattering wound on the top of her head from a small tool of some sort. The maid was killed pretty quickly with just some blows to the head, and Gruber was said to have his face completely shredded and collapsed, leaving jagged bone protruding from the wound. Perhaps the worst of it all was... Gruber's granddaughter who had her jaw smashed and her throat cut. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is that she seems to have remained alive for a few hours after the murders took place. She was found with clumps of hair in her clenched fists. It's believed that she began pulling out clumps of her own hair while she watched the rest of her family be murdered. She later died of shock. Police arrived at the farmstead days later, after mail wasn't collected, the children didn't show up for school, and they also didn't show up for church. The neighbors found the bodies, but after a maddening investigation, there was no suspects that were found. In the barn, the search party found four brutally battered bodies covered with hay. Inside the house, they discovered the bodies of two-year-old Joseph and the maid. It had been the maid's first day on the job, unfortunately. The previous maid had abandoned her position due to the belief that the house was haunted. The police had no leads, and they even decapitated the victims to send the heads to Munich for a clairvoyant to see if they were able to see anything. While it was believed that a number of instruments were used in the murders, the central weapon seems to have been a pickaxe of some sort, known as a mattock, which would have been responsible for all of the smash skulls. This is what that tool would look like. Many have theories about the Interkaifek murders, but perhaps the most obvious explanation is that a stranger may have been living there, biding their time. Still, their theory is primarily based on the fact that the family patriarch and his daughter had been previously accused of incest. The daughter's husband may have come home and killed everyone in a rage. Unfortunately for this theory, the husband was almost definitely killed in action prior to the murders. Some people say that it was his ghost. Another theory is that the father and the daughter may have perpetrated a murder-suicide type situation, but... None of the victims had injuries that were self-inflicted. The farm animals and the Pomeranian watchdog remained unharmed. Creepily, they had even been taken care of and fed in the several days that passed between the murders and the discovery of the bodies. Police initially suspected vagrants or other traveling men, 
but they tossed out the theory after large sums of money were found within the house, not disturbed or stolen. Besides the bodies, the hay, and the bed sheets used to cover the bodies, nothing had been disturbed. Though the killer clearly remained at the farm for several days, feeding the animals, eating meals, and lighting fires in the fireplace. When the police questioned the former maid about her belief that the property was haunted, she said that she had come to the conclusion after constantly hearing sounds in the attic and experiencing a feeling of being watched. Andreas didn't believe her, but he too, like I mentioned, confided things into the neighbors. The newspaper, the footsteps in the snow that was leading to the house but not away. Nobody at the farm knew who they belonged to. To make matters even stranger, one of the family's two keys disappeared shortly before the murder. Combined with the footsteps from the woods, sounds in the attic, and a smoking chimney in the days following the crime, these odd details paint a horrifying picture of a ruthless intruder who may have taken up residence in the house after murdering a whole entire family. The murderer had to be someone who didn't live at the farm, but who? The only thing they could be slated with any degree of certainty is the crimes had been committed by someone who knew their way around a farm, as evidenced by the continued upkeep after the murders and the expert wielding of the mattock. The brutality of the murder suggested that they had been committed by someone with a personal vendetta against one or several of the family members. But the police at the time failed to come up with answers and eventually closed the case, though it wouldn't remain closed. The Interkaifak case has been reopened several times in the last 95 years. Even clairvoyants have been given a chance at it. In 1923, the farm was demolished and the family lays buried without their heads in a plot. The skulls were lost during World War II and have never been returned. Initial evidence gathered at the crime scene is either also lost or too ancient to give up any secrets. Though in 2007, the police took a look at the Interkaifak murders on a cold case file. Because of the basic forensic techniques employed during the original investigation, as well as the missing evidence and later deaths of some of the suspects, they were unable to conclusively identify the murderer, though they all did agree on one theory. The theory that they agreed on was never released to the public out of respect for surviving members of the people related to the crime. At this point, it seems unlikely that the public will ever know who committed the murders or why. Whatever secrets the Gruber family kept in life and death they took them to the grave. <laughs>